Uh, it's nice to have all of you here. How many, who's actually from Villanova? So, okay, so I don't have to talk to any of you. <laughs> but, uh, welcome. Uh, it's nice to have you here, and I hope you enjoy the day. Uh, as all of you are well aware of, there's a lot more to higher education and uh, learning than simply regurgitating information, you know, that you learn in a class. It's more than just uh, coming into a class and learning what, like, one and one equals two. You know, you've done all that. You've done that for many years now. But when you're a part of a higher educational institution, uh, a college or a university, there's a portion of that life that you have to kind of begin to know how do you contribute to knowledge. Because the very essence of higher education is that you've taken it to another level. So you've taken what you've learned and you've kind of expanded it. And in your work with faculty members, part of the responsibility of any faculty member at any college or university is that they should be inviting their students into sharing in that research work or to share in that scholarship. That they should be actively engaging you in contributing to the field of knowledge with, that you are studying in one way or another. And so this conference is an important one in terms of your life as a university student, your life as a college student, that in this field of education that you are being invited to increase knowledge, not just learn it, but increase it. So scholarship really helps you to do that. Uh, we believe very strongly here at Villanova about inviting undergraduates particularly into research work, and I'm going to use them as an example. Dr. Gallagher sitting over here, right. man with the very short hair over here, um, has actually over the years had 16 different students work with him on research work and has published along with them, in joint publications, over 22 articles so that the students have actually appeared on the article with his, with his name. Is that correct? Am I correct? All right, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, yes, it's fine. Um, don't so, let him in. You know, we, we don't want to interrupt the flow here. But, uh, so I, I hope all of you have a very good day. I'm sure that you will be um, encouraging each other with questions and problems and different interactions as to what you are. But I, I really encourage you as you continue your work and wherever you may be, that you continue to increase the knowledge of yourself, but also the knowledge of those around you. And to increase to, that you continue to be aware of the fact how you can add to what people know about our world, our culture, our society. So welcome to Villanova, enjoy the day. There's lots of bagels outside still. So when uh, the DJ gives you a break, eat up, all right? And enjoy the day. Nice to have all of you here. Okay, my next spin will be to introduce Tom Arvinites, Professor of Criminology, who will give a preamble for our keynote speaker. Good morning. Thanks for making the trip. After reading the bio in the program, there's not much left to say about Ken. I noticed you left out your prison time. Yeah, I forgot about that after I submitted it. When he was in punishment society, he spent uh, a year tutoring inmates at Gravesburg Prison, which is the largest maximum security prison in Pennsylvania. The only other thing I'd add to, add to that is how well liked and respected he was among the, uh, all my colleagues. I was his advisor and chair while he was here, and without exception, as, as the uh, professors raved about him, enjoyed his personality and his, his intellectual curiosity, which you may talk about today a little bit, right? I don't want to talk about so that. So this stuff. better be good. And I, and I also learned a couple of days ago, he's got a good sense of humor and he's somewhat of a politician. I asked him, do you use Ken or Kenny? And he said, usually Kenny, but older folks use Ken. So with that, Ken, please come up and share, share your wisdom with the students. Have a great day. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> And thank you for the rest of the department and the university as a whole for having me. Uh, you forgive me if I appear nervous because I don't do a lot of public speaking. Uh, I did when I was in school, but I haven't uh, done so for quite some time since I had my job. And uh, they asked me to do 15 to 20 minutes, and that really seemed far too long. I don't think that you want to hear me talk for that long, and uh, I don't want to either. <laughs> so. To start, uh, and forgive my sloppy notes, uh, I was asked to do this, how long, three months ago, four months ago, maybe even last semester, 
And I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to talk about. My first idea was something sort of philosophical. You know, the, the making a difference, being part of a bigger picture, uh, you're a piece of a puzzle kind of thing. But I felt like uh, you get that all the time. You get that in other keynote addresses. You get that in your classroom. Uh, you get that when you go to your meetings with your academic advisor. Uh, it's redundant. It's something that you hear all the time and something that you all really know. So I thought maybe I'd talk about uh, tips. Because I only graduated from Villanova two years ago. I've only been at my job for about a year and a half. So I thought maybe I'd be more pragmatic. Maybe I would say, uh, this is how to get your foot in the door into the research world. This is how to go about the interview. These are the types of skills that you want to cultivate uh, while you're in school in order to market yourself uh, to nonprofit researchers, research institutions, graduate school, maybe even the for-profit world. Um, but then I thought, it seems a little dry, not that riveting. That's something you can get uh, one sheet with bullet points, and anybody could tell you that easily. So uh, I want to talk about something a little more personal. Uh, maybe not about me, maybe not about you, but really about all of us. And to start, uh, I want to talk about a thought that I have all, all the time, and I'm sure it's something you have now, is that when I go to events like this, and I see a keynote speaker, and I'm sitting where you all are in the audience, I think, what makes them so special? What, why are they up there and I'm here? What gives them the privilege to stand up there and pontificate to me about my work, and I'm almost required to be inspired by that person? Seems a little bit odd, doesn't it? Anybody else think that's a little weird? Right, who has that feeling? And who has that question in their head now? Right? <laughs> Professors, same. <laughs> Dr. Jones? <Yes>. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not trying to be modest by saying this, but I truly believe that there's nothing particularly special about me. And I think that the one thing that brings me up here today in front of all of you and that I suppose earned me the respect of my professors uh, is that there, there's one thing that we all share. There's one thing that we all have in common and one reason that we are really all uh, in this field and why you all chose the major that you're in. What, what are the majors we have here today? Um, CRIM, I'm CRIM, okay. Sociology, uh, what do we got? Econ, anyone from Econ? No, Anthro, okay. What else do we have? Biology. Biology, oh, okay. Anyway. Environmental science. Environmental science. Anyone else? Psychology. Psychology. Cool. Anything else? Political science. Political science. I think the one thing that binds all of us together and why we're interested, particularly in research, is that we are all curious. We all have this unbounded curiosity that's mixed with skepticism, and that's the key part. Unbounded curiosity mixed with skepticism. <coughs> now, I'm sure when all of you go home and you see your extended family, they'll ask you, uh, why did you pick the major that you're in? A lot of you have sort of a, a selfless civic duty, a responsibility uh, to be in the field, uh, more of the make a difference kind of person. And then some of you are sort of, uh, I just kind of like it. Something I'm interested in, it's, kinda, it's cool. I don't know. I like going to class, the assignments, you know, they make my gears tick. And if you're not in one of those extremes, you're certainly somewhere in between. Um, but I think that's what, what is behind all of this is this unbounded curiosity mixed with skepticism. Something that brings us all together that this, no matter what you may tell someone about why you love the work that you're doing, really at your core is because you seek the truth. You have a longing to strip away the, the trappings and veils of misdirection until all that's left is the fact. And that's not to overly romanticize uh, research, social science, and the natural sciences. It's simply the nature of what we do. Now, 
I'm a little more cynical than the average person. I see the world as uh, really an imperfect place filled with imperfect people who have uh, an unfortunate tendency to exclude, to ignore, uh, to forget information, to embellish that information, and when it comes down to it, ultimately to lie and to deceive. That might be too dark for some people, but uh, certainly we can all agree that there is a tremendous amount of misinformation out there, am I right? There's a tremendous amount of misinformation, or perhaps even worse, a complete lack of information in a certain area. And that irritates us, that grinds us to our core. It, it's something that <coughs> bothers us constantly, that, that there is a, a piece of information out there that is so universally accepted that we know is not true. We may not know what the truth is, but we have the longing to find what the truth is. To that end, I believe that the work that we do, the work that, as many of you young people have started, and for those of us in the room with more illustrious careers have been doing for so long, you and I, we are the foil to our world's unfortunate circumstances. We are the foil to that. Strip away the trappings of misdirection. You strip away the trappings of no information. Pulling out only the truth until all that's left is what is true and what is not is pushed away. And this is not political. I'm not here to tell you that you have to have a fervent belief in a political or social cause. I I have my beliefs, I have my tendencies, but I don't think that's requisite to excel in the field. This is also not philosophical. I'm not a huge believer either way in the whole idea of the, you're a person who can make a difference. Uh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. I certainly have not had long enough of a career to have a strong opinion about that. It's not political, it's not philosophical, and it's certainly not pragmatic. It's personal. It's really who you are at your core. Like I said, unbounded curiosity, which we all have, we're all people, but the thing that makes us all special is that, and the thing that bounds us all together is the skepticism, is to know that there's more to be known. We are skeptical, we are skeptics who are skeptical of skeptics. Cynics who are cynical of cynics. And critics who are critical of critics. And it's really who we are, it's really what drives us. I'm not here to tell you why you should be interested in the field. I'm not here to guess what brought you into this, and I'm not here to predict what's going to keep you here. I simply want to share with you how I've come to this realization of what makes us all unique and what binds us all together at the same time. It's not political, it's not philosophical, it's not pragmatic, it is who you are. And where you go from there, I leave to you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Definitely professorial material. He even has the regulation pads on the elbows. Uh, next up in the rotation is Jessica Flynn, uh, one of our star students who managed to evade me her entire academic career. Perhaps cause, perhaps a thing. Uh, she's going to engage you after the speeches stop in an intellectual activity meant to get you uh, out on the interpersonal dance floor. 
Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Um, like Dr. John said, I somehow managed to evade um, his courses my entire four years here. Um, but I told him earlier that I think um, my education is lacking thereby. So. Um, Don't be snotty. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, as he said, we're going to do a super intellectual activity called bingo. Um, so. Um, Basically, um, what we're going to do is we're going to head out into the atrium where you all um, registered this morning. And um, you can find your bingo card in your packet. It's green. Everyone have a packet. If not, we have extras out there when we get out there, so don't worry. Um, so basically, I'm sure a lot of you have done this before. What you're going to do is you're going to mingle and you're going to actually speak to each other. And you're going to find people who fit the description on the sheet. <coughs> so some of them might say, um, has used SPSS or has studied Karl Marx. Um, so you're going to go around and find people that fit those descriptions. But of course, we're all very intelligent people, so we've got to make this a little bit harder. Um, so you can only use each person for one square. So you can't just you know, go up to one person and have their name on five squares. And you also can only talk to people not from your university. So um, that makes it a little more interesting and possibly more difficult. Um, so once you have two lines, so you've all played bingo before, yes. So straight across, up and down, or diagonal. Once you have two of those, we have prizes. So that's good. Um, so Dr. Steckler, who is out there? Yes, I saw. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have a um, bingo card checker um, out there, and I'll stand next to her. So once you have those two, if you come over there, we can check um, your card, and we will give you a prize. Um, for the first five, I believe? Five to ten. Five to ten. Five to ten. Um, and just bear with us here. I know this is very, like, seems very, like, orientation-y or whatever, what have you. Um, but, you know, we got to get those interpersonal, you know, connections. Um, and trust me when I tell you that this will make it easier when you go to present later. You won't feel so, like, awkward, like, who are these people? I don't know these people. Um, it'll be better, I thought. So just have some fun with it, go along with it. There's some <coughs> interesting things on there. And also, you don't all have the same card, so that makes it a little more fun. Um, so we're all going to head back out. Not yet. Oh, okay. I have some remarks to finish. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <coughs> OK, my final set is a mashup of three thank yous. Uh, first, <coughs> I'd like to thank Adele Lindenmeyer, the acting dean of Arts and Sciences. I want to thank her for her support and her presence. Uh, in her email to me, she said, this would be the crowning jewel uh, of your academic careers. Well, we hope so. Uh, secondly, I have to thank, I want to thank, the club manager to my DJ. Uh, you have all received myriad messages inviting, inspiring, and yes, nagging you to participate in today's events. Uh, I can assure you that the superstructure beyond today's activities is even more uh, effectively supported by Marietta Pardes. Marietta, I insist that you stand up and take some applause. OK, my final thank you is to you, the students. Uh, I have a tiny little class of research methods in which four research projects have been developed. And I have to say honestly, each of the four has revealed findings that I simply am going to have to take seriously in my own work. The point is that today isn't just some positive research experiences uh, and something for you to put on your resume. Undergraduate student research can be a source of real discovery. Go forth and reveal your discoveries to yourselves. Thank you.